Hey guys, Dr. Cliff AUD here. So a lot of you are aware that Justin Bieber announced on his Instagram channel yesterday that he has been diagnosed with herpes zoster oticus, which is also more commonly known as the Ramsey Hunt syndrome, which is a syndrome that affects your facial nerve and your vestibular cochlear nerve. And it creates a variety of different issues for individuals with this particular condition. So I actually wanted to just go through this video that he posted on his Instagram channel to give you guys a better understanding of what this actually means for him. Hey everyone, um, Justin here. Uh, I wanted to update you guys on what's been going on. Um, obviously, as you can probably see from my face, um, I have uh, this syndrome called uh, Ramsey Hunt syndrome and it is from this virus that um, attacks the nerve in my ear in my facial nerves and has caused my face to have paralysis as you can see this eye is not blinking I can't smile on this side of my face. This nostril will not move. All right, so what actually causes this particular condition? So there's the varicella herpes virus that is basically a virus that's dormant inside of you until it gets reawakened. So individuals who have had chicken pox in the past, um, they are all have this virus inside of them, and you probably have it inside of you as well if you had chicken pox, of course. Um, but it actually causes like a shingles outbreak is kind of the onset of this. So you end up getting rashes or blisters from that as well. Um, and it's very uncommon. It's only about five out of 100,000 individuals that actually get this condition. And it's actually more common in individuals who are above the age of 60. And I don't know exactly how old Justin Bieber is, but he is nowhere even close to age 60 at this point. Now he's already starting to explain some of the symptoms that he's having from this particular condition. Obviously the one that stands out the most is the facial paralysis on that half of his face where he cannot move his nostril, that half of his mouth, or that eyelid. Um, I'm not seeing any rashing on him, which is a common aspect of this condition, but I don't see it, at least in this video. But a couple of the other things that he's probably going through is some hearing loss. He did mention that he's having an issue with the nerve in that particular ear. Um, which of course can cause hearing loss. It also can cause ear pain. It can cause tinnitus, which is that ringing and buzzing sound inside of your ears. And it can even cause vertigo. All right, let's go ahead and see what else he has to say about this. So there's full paralysis in the side of my face. So for those who are frustrated by my cancellations of the next shows, um, I'm just physically obviously not <laughs> capable of doing them. Uh, this is pretty serious, as you can see. And Justin is absolutely correct. This is a serious condition because it affects two of his cranial nerves. He has the seventh cranial nerve and the eighth cranial nerve. Let's talk about the seventh cranial nerve first. So the seventh cranial nerve is the facial nerve. So that's the reason why he's having all the, that paralysis on that half of his face is because these nerves become inflamed by this virus and information cannot travel to and from the brain through these nerves. And so he's not able to actually receive the information that his brain brain is telling his face to do to move his face. And so that's why he's not able to actually move it. Now, when you look at the eighth cranial nerve, there's actually two nerves that kind of join and create one. So yeah, it's called the vestibular cochlear nerve. So the vestibular portion takes information to and from the semicircular canals inside of your inner ear that will control your balance or your perception of balance. So that's where vertigo actually comes from in this particular case with this condition. Essentially what happens here is that you have these semicircular canals in both of your ears and your brain expects, expects to be receiving information that is equal but opposite in both of those ears. And when you take away the transmission of the movement of your head from one particular ear, essentially what your brain is getting is mixed matched information and then it ends up making you feel dizzy. So that's something that he might be going through at this point right now. 
And then the other part of that nerve is called the, the cochlear nerve. So you have the vestibular cochlear nerve. The cochlear portion of this nerve is controlling the information going to and from the cochlea, which is your hearing organ. And so if your hearing organ cannot transmit the sound up to the brain, then you actually can't hear. And so we know that it actually creates a, it can create a significant amount of hearing loss, both in the low and high frequency ranges, but typically more of the high frequency ranges. Now here's a figure that I actually found from a study published in 2016, which indicates that the pure tone average in the high frequencies is actually worse than the pure tone average in the low frequencies. And when you look at the actual numbers on this, the hearing loss in the high frequencies can be up to 31.5 decibels. And in the low frequencies from a pure tone average uh, can be around 28.6 decibels. So when you start looking at it from the amount of decibels of loss that he could potentially be suffering from right now, it could be anywhere up to around 30 decibels or so, which is about the equivalent of taking a foam earplug, sticking it inside of your ear, and then basically going out throughout your whole day wearing that earplug. Now, when it comes down to the aspect of tinnitus, anytime that you sustain a hearing loss in one ear, then you have the potential that your brain could be creating a phantom sound to replace that missing auditory information. And for a lot of individuals, it comes across as being like a ringing or a buzzing sound. So there is potential that Justin is actually going through some of that as well from a tinnitus perspective. All right, let's go ahead and continue on. Um, I wish this wasn't the case, but obviously my body's telling me I got to slow down. And um, I hope you guys understand. And uh, I'll be using this time to just rest and relax and get back to 100% so that I can... Um, do what uh, I was born to do, but in the meantime, so he's talking about needing to kind of rest and kind of take it easy and relax a little bit. And he's absolutely correct. I mean, you know, the earlier that you catch this, the earlier that you can treat it. And one of the potential causes of this is just like a lot of high stress. So some of the treatments for this is using, you know, antiviral drugs, corticosteroids um, that you can take um, uh, to reduce the inflammation. Um, you have anxiety medications that can be taken for this and even pain relievers if he's experiencing a lot of pain. Now he doesn't specifically mention that he's having pain with this, but um, there is some potential that there are symptoms that he's having that he's not letting us know at this particular point. This ain't it. I gotta, I gotta go get my, my rest on so that I can get my face back to where it's supposed to be. Um, and you know, like I mentioned before, it, it absolutely is important that he takes care of this sooner rather than later. He's got to take a break. He's got to uh, figure out uh, what he needs to do to get this condition to kind of go back into remission, right? Um, and so here's the thing. Individuals who are treated earlier with this condition have a better prognosis for success. So, and I have to imagine that he probably ended up catching this pretty early. Um, and you know, it, the thing is, is that if it doesn't get better, then he could have have long-term potential facial paralysis. He could have long-term hearing loss. He could have long-term tinnitus. Uh, most likely not long-term um, vertigo from this because after a period of time of your your one ear not being able to send information to your brain, your brain realizes that there's something wrong with that ear and it no longer relies on information from that particular side. There are other conditions that involve the inner ear uh, from a vestibular standpoint. Um, the individuals, they start off being really dizzy and then after a period of time, that dizziness just goes away entirely. Now, when you think about it, there is some potential that he may actually need a hearing aid for this in the future if this condition doesn't reverse. And so um, it will just, time will tell on that. And um, hopefully he does recover from this and doesn't actually require the use of a hearing aid. But if this condition were to be giving him a significant hearing loss, um, it is unlikely that he will be able to continue on doing the things that he does in the same way that he does them without some kind of uh, assistance in the form of a hearing aid in this particular case. I love you guys. Thanks for being patient with me. And uh, I'm going to get better. And I'm doing all these facial exercises to get my face back to normal. And um, it will go back to normal. It's just time. And we don't know how much time that's going to be. But it's going to be 
Now, I don't know if him doing facial exercises is actually going to help it because the actual problem here is that inflammation of the nerve. So um, he can try to do as many exercises as possible. Um, we'll see essentially what happens with that. Now, the positive outlook that he's having here, and yes, he is kind of sounding a little upset, of course, everyone, anyone would be um, if this is a very uh, new thing for them of going through it. Uh, but positive mental attitude for this is, is going to be really important for him. But he's probably got a really good team of doctors that is giving him every everything that he needs to get this condition to basically go away. It's going to be okay. And I have hope and um, I trust God and um, I trust that this is all going to, it's all for a reason. And um, I'm not sure what that is right now, but in the meantime, I'm going to rest and I, I love you guys. Peace. So it's pretty cool that he actually went out and um, made a video explaining all of this because obviously he has tour dates and stuff like that and, and other appearance responsibilities. Um, and, and, it, and again, it's totally understandable that he would feel a little bit depressed with this or even a lot depressed with this. But I really do think that he has a good chance of recovering from this. You know, he's also a younger guy, so um, his ability to heal from this is probably going to be better than someone who got this condition uh, over the age of 60, basically. So um, I'm pulling for him. I think that he's going to be able to recover from this, and hopefully I'll be able to give you guys an update video in the future saying uh, that everything is back to normal. And, um, and you know, Justin, if you're watching this, uh, good luck, buddy. I'm pulling for you.